Hey everybody, got a gynecology video here. Um, this video is going to go over uh, the common sites of both fertilization and ectopic pregnancy in the fallopian tube. This is a very common boards question. Um, that boards question being where in the fallopian tube is the most likely site of an ectopic pregnancy. And it is like 90% of them or 80% of them I believe are some of the most recent numbers uh, occur in this region that we're going to talk about today. Um, just to orient you to our drawing here, we have uh, the uterus, a rough schematic of the uterus, um, the cervix making uh, the vaginal opening down here, ovarian ligament to the ovary, and then we have uh, the fallopian tube. And before we talk about the exact site of uh, fertilization and uh, thus ectopic pregnancy or implantation, we're going to talk about uh, the different parts here. So we already talked about um, the ovary, ovarian ligament or ovarian segment, um, cervix, uterus, and now we have this fallopian tube. Now the fallopian tube has parts to it, right? And so these, these first part here is going to be the fimbrae. Um, the, the fimbrae are important because they're kind of like fingers or fimbrae fingers. So they're kind of, they have these little projections here. So when the ovary during ovulation release, releases that secondary oocyte, um, you know, to be caught by the, by the uh, fallopian tube and brought into the uterus, um, that secondary oocyte is released by the ovary and these fimbrae will reach out kind of like fingers and catch it and guide it into what's called the infundibulum. Now, infundibulum is like um, a Latin word kind of talking about a funnel or a hollow body that kind of funnels down or squeezes down. Um, there's infundibulums all over the body, right? So we have like the pituitary, um, the infundibulum attaching the uh, hypothalamus down the pituitary, um, all sorts of infundibulums. This one is going to be the infundibular portion of the fallopian tube. It's the second portion there after the fimbrae. Next, we're going to move into the ampulla, and the last one we're going to talk about today that's really important um, is the isthmus. Now, the isthmus is the narrowest portion. Um, you might know what an isthmus is, like in landforms, but it's a narrow uh, landform connecting two larger landforms, right? So it is very narrow, and that is why people usually think that the isthmus is the site of ectopic pregnancy. However, that's incorrect. Um, the most common site of ectopic pregnancy is the ampulla, which is not the narrowest, but it's the site where fertilization occurs, right? So um, when a male ejaculates and sperm is inside the, uh, the vagina, it can then go through, uh, as long as it has successful motility, into the uterine cavity, out, and actually that sperm will migrate all the way out to this ampulla, so that, like we talked about earlier, when that little tiny secondary oocyte is released, and caught by those fimbrae, it starts to come down, and this is a common site of fertilization uh, in humans. In fact, I think it's it's uh, might be the only site of, of, of fertilization, as long as nothing's wrong, in humans, is this ampulla. So this is where they actually the egg gets fertilized, um, and because of that, once that egg gets fertilized, as you remember from um, reproduction class, uh, well, it, it looks to a place to implant, right? It needs to implant to start growing, to get nutrients, um, and so it can implant anywhere along here. Um, because of the cell types found in the ampulla and because of the, uh, the, the mucus found there and um, the secretions there, I should say rather, it, it presents itself as a nice place to implant. So we have this fertilized egg. It implants here instead of the uterine cavity where it's supposed to implant. And it starts to grow because it has the nutrients it needs to grow. And so it starts to grow it gets too big, and that's where you have that condition known as ectopic pregnancy. Now, ectopic just means somewhere where it's not supposed to be, right? So we want it to be inside the uterus. Uh, that's where we want our, our little fetus to develop, or our embryo to develop, instead of developing out here. And the problem is, is when that fallopian tube, the ampulla, you know, it starts this big. And so when that, that fertilized egg comes through in the beginning and it implants incorrectly, or ectopically implants, um, it's not a big deal at first. Um, because it has all this room to grow, but as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it starts to grow Well now this this uh, ampulla either has to start bulging to allow for the, the growing embryo or else it's uh, It's not gonna work right it's gonna rupture and so that's where you see um, Women of reproductive ages showing up to the ER with just crazy abdominal pain usually one-sided right because we have fallopian tubes on both sides of the ears. I didn't draw this one, but there's one over there and so um, when you ovulate, it could come from either side, the oocyte could, and um, so it implants in there, it starts to grow, and over time, you know, you have this, uh, this growing mass that causes pain, inflammation and pain, um, 
just an aside, if you do have the ectopic pregnancy, um, sometimes they want to try and save the fallopian tube. So let's say it's like a 16-year-old female who still has plenty of years of childbearing potential left. Um, they might try and save that fallopian tube. And they might just try and go in, in size and remove just the ectopic pregnancy. Or they might, you know, if it's an older female um, who's already had children and is okay uh, being sterilized, at least on one side, they will just remove the fallopian tube and, and cut it all out, probably leaving the ovary to avoid causing a iatrogenic menopause. Um, but in any case, just to sum it up, we have different parts of the fallopian tube. The isthmus is the narrowest. However, the ampulla is the most common site of both fertilization and ectopic pregnancy.